today we're going to be talking about the superheat at the compressor, minimum values, and how that reflects the discharge temperature on the compressor. When we look at very similar to measuring superheat at the evaporator, we have to have a minimum superheat at the compressor to make sure that we're not getting liquid flood back. Because liquid flood back basically will start diluting the bearings of the compressor and be doing internal damage, possibly valves if it's a recip compressor. But in this one with the scroll, basically we're probably going to be doing bearing damage. So basically kind of the same thought when we look at the evaporator superheat, we've got our pressure temperature relationship. So we basically take a look, we've got our suction gauge on, we've clamped on with our temperature probe, and then we're referencing it to our PT chart to see what kind of superheat we do have. And Copeland recommends a minimum of 20 degrees superheat at the compressor. And that all ties in to when on this particular one, this one is a low temp scroll. This one has what they call a discharge temperature valve on it. So when this discharge temperature in the bulb on this head gets above 194 degrees, it starts throttling this valve to inject saturated liquid vapor into the scroll set to cool it down to help it with its discharge temperature.